we are going to discuss these process one by one by taking different examples so let's have examples of highly reactive metals so these metals are generally present in their oxides chlorides etc convert these metal sulfates and metal carbonates to metal oxides and apart from that metal oxide these metals are also forming the chlorides these metal oxides and chlorides have high affinity towards the oxygen and chlorides than the carbon because these are highly reactive than the carbon so these can't be reduced by using the carbon or alumina powder so that is why these are extracted from their molten salts by electrolytic reduction method and here in this electrolytic reduction method Redox reactions are taking place at two electrodes, one is anode and the other one is cathode. So just to have an idea about the electrolytic reduction, here I'll just give you one trick that is LOAN. On the left hand side, we generally place our anode and on the right hand side, we place our cathode. And on the anode, oxidation is taking place. And since oxidation is taking place, so release of electrons are taking place at this electrode. So that is why this electrode is also known as negative terminal. This is positive electrode, but negative terminal, right? And this negative terminal is are connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So this is the basic concept of a cell formation. Electrolytic reduction is taking place on anode and cathode. This is just a representation actually the, and this is not the representation of any of the extraction method. Through this method, I'll just give you an idea about the anode and cathode, how they work. Now I'll just give you the example of extraction of sodium chloride, right? So through this electrolytic reduction method on the anode oxidation is taking place now you can understand so here oxidation means loss of electron so right loss of electron is taking place secondly how you can determine this here we are having negative minus and here we are having zero oxidation state is increasing right minus one to zero so here oxidation state is increasing the second reaction which is taking place is on cathode so here we are having sodium, sodium is positively charged and this is plus of electron means gain of electron. So gain of electron is reduction and reduction is taking place at cathode. So this plus 1 and minus 1 gives us 0. So this is how we can show. Now the question comes why molten salts only? Why not aqueous solutions? Aqueous solution means we are having the sodium chloride and we dissolve that sodium chloride into water and we electrolyte that solution but we are not saying the aqueous solution of sodium chloride we are saying the molten molten means we melted the sodium chloride and of that molted sodium chloride electrolytic reduction is taking place so the reason behind that i just give you anodic and cathodic reactions in the molten state we are having only sodium plus and cl minus but in the aqueous case we are having water also so water gives us h plus and oh minus now i just give you the reduction potentials for oh minus cl minus and h plus and sodium plus so before discuss about this reduction potential and which is going to be reduced which is going to be oxidized i'll just give you an idea about the reduction potential so in the reactivity series of reduction potential first we are having negative then zero and then positive and as we are moving down the series of reduction potential increases minus zero and plus i will uh, discuss this in detail in the electrochemistry right so no need to worry so here just find out this is minus two this is minus zero so which is higher value this minus 0 0.41 is the higher value than this minus 2.71 because these are negative terms so this is higher than this it means it has high reducing potential or it will get reduced first as compared to the sodium plus. Now we come to this reduction potential but at anode oxidation is taking place. This is having high reduction tendency means less oxidation tendency. So less oxidation tendency means it oxidized first as compared to this but here is a problem of over voltage so that OH minus will not get oxidized at this anode only Cl minus converted to Cl2. Just because of this over voltage, what is left behind you just see. 
OH minus is left behind and here in this case sodium plus because it has high tendency for reduction. If you able to understand that that is fine otherwise you can write me in the comment section I will just tell you with the help of some other electrochemistry video. So here what is left behind in case of aqueous solution of NaCl OH minus is left behind and sodium plus is left behind. So rather getting the sodium from NaCl we are having formation of NaOH takes place. So that is the reason why alkali and alkaline earth metal can't extract it from their aqueous solution rather they are extracted from the molten metal chlorides and oxides. Here I'll just tell you another example of oxide. These metals are having chloride. In the same manner we can do this and for aluminium oxide I'll give you the example. Here we are having aluminium oxide right. So this aluminium oxide is split into 2 times Al3 plus plus 3 times O2 minus right on anode here what we are having O2 minus is converted to oxygen which is a gas and which is released and electrons are left behind on the anode. This aluminium 3 plus on cathode will receive the 3 electrons and convert it to aluminium. So this is how the reduction and oxidation takes place on anode and cathode and how we are going to understand this low oxidation state to high minus 2 to plus 0 so we are in on increasing side plus 3 to 0 means we are on decreasing side for reduction high oxidation state to low oxidation state so plus 3 to 0 here low oxidation state 2 minus 2 0 if we write the overall reaction for this anodic and cathodic reaction so what we get we have to balance this equation so here we are having 4 Al in the liquid form this is metal molten metal plus 3 oxygen which is released from anode side in the gaseous form the metals which we get by this electrolytic method they are very pure and no need for further purification of these metals. One can understand the extraction of highly reactive metals. In the next video, we are going to discuss about the extraction of moderately reactive metals. And I hope you understand the concepts which we have discussed in this video. If you like, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe my channel. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.